Welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this video, we're going to work some practice problems on how to write formulas for ionic compounds. Now, before you begin, I suggest you go to GetChemistryHelp.com and you print out the worksheet that accompanies this lesson, as well as a copy of the periodic table. Okay, let's just go ahead and jump right in. So, barium. Well, barium has the symbol BA. And if you look on your periodic table, you'll see it's in group 2, which means it has a charge of 2 positive. Sulfide. Now, if an ion ends in I, that normally means that it's just a non-metal and not a polyatomic. So, sulfide probably came from sulfur. And again, if you look on your periodic table, you'll see that it's 2 away from the noble gases, so it's 2 negative. So, a 2 positive and a 2 negative cancel out, and we would just have BAS. How about aluminum selenate? Well, aluminum is Al, and if you look on your periodic table, it's in group 3, and it's also part of what I like to call the magic triangle. So, it has a fixed charge of 3 positive. Selenate, okay, 8 tells me that it is a polyatomic. So, selenate must have come from selenium. Selenium is in that center box of the nonmetals. So if you remember from our lesson on the polyatomic ions, that means it has four oxygens. And it's three away from the noble gases, so it's three negative. So again, we have a three positive and a three negative. So aluminum selenate would be AlSeO4. And we don't need parentheses around this polyatomic because there's only one of them. You only use parentheses if there's more than one. Manganese 5. Well, manganese, Mn, the 5 tells me it's 5 positive. Oxide. Again, ide normally means that the anion is just a single nonmetal. It's not a polyatomic. So oxide will come from oxygen. So we look on our periodic table. We see that oxygen is 2 away from the noble gases, so it must be 2 negative. Well, how do we balance a 5 positive and a 2 negative? Well, we can use our crossover rule we saw in our lesson. Put the 5 over there as a subscript and the 2 over here as a subscript. And that gives me Mn2O5. And we'll just quickly check that. So if I had 2 manganese 5, that would give me a total of 10 positive. And if I had 5 oxides, that would give me a total of 10 negative. So yeah, that works. 10 positive neutralizes 10 negative. How about beryllium hypoarsenite? So we find beryllium on our periodic table. It's in group two, so it's always two plus. Hypoarsenite, okay, hypoite. So that's definitely a poly polyatomic. We're gonna base that off of what's arsenate. So arsenate would be ASO4, because arsenic's in that center box, and it's three away, so it must be three negative. Well, hypo and ite tells me that it's lost two oxygens. So it went from ASO4, three negative, must have gone to ASO2, three negative. So now again, we use our crossover rule. So we put this three over here as a subscript, so three beryllium's. We put this two over here as a subscript, so ASO2, two. But remember, I don't want to write it like this because that looks like 22 oxygens. I want two hypoarsenites, so I put it in parentheses. How about gallium phosphide? Okay, again, gallium is GA. And if you look, look on your periodic table, it's in our little magic triangle. So it's one of the three that's always three positive. Phosphide. Again, I normally means that it's just from a nonmetal. So phosphide probably came from phosphorus. Well, phosphorus is three away from the noble gases, so it's three negative. So a three positive and a three negative cancel out, and we get GAP. How about iron two phosphite? Iron is Fe. The Roman numeral two tells me the charge is two positive. Okay, the last one was phosphide. This one's phosphite. Okay, ite refers to one of the polyatomics. Well, what's phosphate? Well, phosphate, phosphorus is in that center box we discussed on the polyatomic ion lesson. So it has four oxygens. It's three away from the noble gases, so it's three negative. That's phosphate. Well, phosphite 
Ite tells me it lost an oxygen. So instead of PO4, it'd be PO3, but the charge doesn't change, still three negative. So these I would swap over again, put my two over here, put my three over here. I would get Fe3 parenthesis PO3 parenthesis two. How about number seven, platinum two cyanide. So platinum two would be PT2 positive cyanide. Now I said normally ide means it's just a single nonmetal, but this is one of the couple of polyatomics that does end in ide. Cyanide and hydroxide are a couple of those. So cyanide is a polyatomic, just one of the ones you have to memorize. It's CN negative. So we swap the two over here. We take the one over here, so PT, and then CN, we need two of them, right? So don't write it like this, because that's one carbon, two nitrogens. We need two cyanides, so like that. Mercury two, okay, that would be HG two positive. Hydrogen carbonate. Okay, now as you might recall from our lesson on polyatomic ions, hydrogen carbonate, when you have hydrogen, that's just like adding an H plus onto whatever is over here. So hydrogen will be H plus, carbonate is CO3, two minus. So if I put those together, what do I get? Well, I get HCO3, the positive and the two negative just become a single negative. And then I cross over the two and the one and I would get HG, parenthesis, HCO3, parenthesis, two. Okay, last one, lithium perbromate. Well, lithium is in group one, so that tells me it's one positive. Perbromate. Okay, well, we'll base this off of what bromate is. So bromate's on the right side. It's outside that center box, so it only has three oxygens. It's one away from the noble gases, so it's one negative. Per tells me I added an oxygen. So instead of BRO3, it's BRO4 negative. So we got a positive and a negative. So those cancel out and the formula would be LiBrO4. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on writing formulas for ionic compounds. Be sure and click below on the subscribe button so you can be notified as soon as new videos are released and we will see you next time. Thank you.